Mom, you know I really hate those girls who go around in fancy cars they bought with someone else's money and wear ridiculously expensive designer shoes they bought with someone else's money. What I hate the most about them is that they aren't even aware of how embarrassing they are. Well, I don't particularly like those kinds of girls either. I also think that they are quite pathetic. Why are you being like this then? Now listen here. I opened up my very own restaurant when I was 25 years old, which I built up from the ground through sweat and hard work. Which is exactly what Francesca has done. She has a lot in common with you, so why are you so against her? I didn't receive a single penny from my parents to help me get started, you know. And when I got married, I didn't receive a single penny from my in-laws either. Yeah, she didn't either. I'm just telling you to take caution. After all, I have experience. I've been married to your father for more than half my life, after all. Mom, I really don't want to hear you droning on about your relationship with Dad, okay? Can't you just be happy that I finally found someone I really want to be with? Why do you keep bringing up other women and trying to change my mind? Francesca and I are really well suited to each other. I'm not saying that you're not well suited to each other. I know exactly what it's like to feel that way about someone. When your father and I started dating back when we were just 24 years old, we also both thought that we were really well suited to each other. But look at us now. We're constantly at each other's throats. We don't even eat dinner at the same table these days. You know better than anyone how much your father dislikes me. Do you have any idea how much unhappiness a relationship like that brings? You never seem to be that unhappy from my perspective, Mom. Who said we were talking about me? I'm talking about your father. He's the one who is thoroughly miserable. Mom, I don't want to hear it anymore. He comes from an affluent background and graduated from a good college. But then he went and married a businesswoman like me who just had making money on the brain. And I think he spent his whole life regretting not marrying someone from a similar background who could have helped him live a more comfortable life. I know that you don't approve of this marriage. The fact that you're using your own situation as an example of why I shouldn't go through with it has made that abundantly clear. However, I would really appreciate it if you would stop doing that now, because it just puts me in a bad mood. Whatever you say, Francesca and I are going to get married, and that's final. We work really well together and we really respect each other's opinions and lifestyles. What I'm saying is that it may feel like you work really well together right now because you haven't stood the test of time. You need to take into account the fact that marriage is for the rest of your lives. Are you really going to marry a girl whose parents are nothing more than street vendors? Don't make me feel like all the effort I put into raising you properly was all for nothing. Mom, I really don't appreciate you belittling Francesca's parents for their profession. Were you not just talking about how you built up your business from nothing? Well, I was able to provide my children with a much better environment than they were. I got married at 26 and waited until I was 30 to have my kids, so that I would be in the right financial situation to provide for them. My parents wouldn't have anything to do with me, and I was able to do that for you all by myself. All the while having your father is back, no matter what. Mom, please stop this. All I'm saying is that circumstances change. That's all. When children become involved, it isn't just about the two of you anymore. You become a family and you have other, smaller humans to prioritize over yourselves. And you also don't know whether you'll agree on what the best way to raise your children is. I honestly got so sick of butting heads with your father over the best way to raise you two. I'm telling you all this for your own good, son. Marriage is not a walk in the park. And I'm not expecting it to be a walk in the park. You should go and find a girl who grew up in similar circumstances to you and forget about this one. I want to be confident that I can pass all my money and property on to you. There's no way I can give it to that brother of yours. He would have it all squandered away in no time. He just spends all his time fooling around with questionable girls or hanging out at the golf course. As soon as he receives any kind of money, he'll go and blow it all on girls the first chance he gets. Mom, I've told you a million times already that I'm not interested in the inheritance. 
I'm just happy for Francesca and I to just support ourselves financially. Don't make me laugh. I know full well that you're just putting on an act and you're thinking, she's already said she won't give it to my brother, so I'm obviously just going to receive it anyway. You wouldn't be so confident if I turned around and said that I definitely wouldn't be giving it to you now, would you? Ugh, I'm so tired of this, Mom. So this is why I'm saying it will be in your best interests to go and get married to a girl who will know what to do with this money and property. So you really want to be the one to take over managing my property, Mark? Why shouldn't I? Well, it's just because ever since you graduated from college, all you've done is mess around. You've been holed up in your room for years playing games during the day getting money from the building manager and spending it on girls. You drag them around to go and play golf, you go on overseas trips and buy expensive guitars that you don't even play. If you're not doing that, you're drinking to blow off steam after fighting with your girlfriend. Honestly, all you do is raise my blood pressure. Mom, please just have a little more confidence in me, okay? Fine, fine, I will try. But the commercial building I own is a real estate gem. You do know that it can't just be passive income, right? Managing a property like this is a business in itself. Mom, I'm confident that I can manage it, so please just trust me. Besides, Aiden has already said that he doesn't want anything to do with it, hasn't he? He's already committed to working for that company he's in for life, it seems. So there's no point in relying on him. So, what's it going to be, Mom? Hmm. However I think about it, I just don't like the idea of leaving my assets to you. But why, Mom? Even people with much more managerial experience end up not being able to manage big commercial buildings like mine. You did the bare minimum in college, spent all your spare time golfing and drinking with girls. So, how on earth am I meant to trust the likes of you? Mom, please. I'm confident that I can do well with this. Forget it. You have no business acumen, and it would be better for you to just not get involved with this. Do you think it was easy for me to keep things running smoothly for this long? It's no piece of cake, I'm telling you. Well, my current girlfriend is from a pretty rich family, so if I marry her, then I'm sure things will be fine. She may be happy messing around with you now, but she's no fool. She knows that you're not husband material and she isn't going to marry you. Don't be so sure about that. I'm confident I can get her to marry me and bring her family's money to the table. You're missing the point here entirely. It doesn't matter whether it's your money or her money that goes into this. What matters is that you understand how much time and energy you need to put into this. I hope you're not thinking of selling the building whilst I'm still alive and well. Because I won't have that happening, I can assure you. Please, Mom, just give it to me already. Honestly, one son doesn't want to accept any money from me, acts like it's dirty somehow, and doesn't want to live anywhere near me. And the other has no qualms about misusing his poor mother's money. Neither of you will be getting any inheritance at all from me at this rate. Well, you must just be making that number up. There's quite a big difference between 100 or 120 people, you know. But Francesca, I counted each and every one of them, you know. I counted too. Look here, guys. It doesn't really matter whether there were 100 or 120 people. Ugh, oh, it's driving me crazy. Does it even matter? Let's say there are 100. We're talking about daily sales of around $1,000. How was it in our last restaurant? How much were we getting in daily sales there? Well, I guess we were doing pretty okay. Guys, seriously, do you know how much we need in a month to cover just my salary, the head chef's salary, and the sous chef's salary alone? Even the kitchen assistants who do the pot wash need to be paid something. Just say it already. You're making us uneasy. In fact, I won't even include my own wages. Plus, we have to pay the monthly rent for the shop, and then there's the interest on the money borrowed from the bank. When you start thinking about all the miscellaneous expenses each month, it really gives you the chills. 
If it gives you the chills, then I'm not going to be able to sleep at night. Do you know how much money I invested in this restaurant? Hey, nobody ever asked you to invest, you know. By the way, Francesca, what is it now? Did we get the number of customers wrong again? No, no, it's not that. Well, it's just that we haven't officially opened yet. We haven't had an opening event or done any promos, but there are already quite a few people coming in to eat. Well, yes, that is true. Well, that means we've definitely captured the interest of customers in the area, haven't we? It indicates that there's a demand for our food. We need to be a little more optimistic. Things are going our way, you know. And anyway, Isabel, the lady who makes the pasta is going to quit soon, isn't she? And to be honest, we don't really need her, do we? She's so up herself and she thinks she's better than everybody because she took a cooking course in Italy and may or may not be a quarter Italian or whatever. I guess her contract is going to be up in two months. We only agreed that she would work here whilst we're setting things up. But she does have a lot of technical know-how, which means that employing her is rather expensive. But until then, she's just another expense. Uh, this whole thing is driving me crazy. After she's gone, we'll have much more money to play with. It's going to be fine. But can you guarantee that things are going to work out for us here? I mean, obviously I can't guarantee anything. But as long as the three of us put our heads together and work hard, anything is possible. I've been working for you for the past five years, Francesca. And I trust that this will work. I have confidence in us. After a month or two, we'll have a line of customers out the door. Just you wait. The hall staff, the part-time students, they all get paid generously. And in five months or so, we will be earning enough to cover all their wages and still be able to turn over a huge profit. Ah, uh, it's been over an hour already. How much longer is she going to keep me waiting? Francesca? Um, yes? I'm Beatrice, Aiden's mother. Hi, it's so nice to finally meet you. I'm sorry to have made you wait for so long. You see, I live out of state, out in the country, so it takes me a while to get here. I'm sure Aiden had already told you that. Yes, I was aware of that. We used to live here just by the river, but I had to move away because of business. Yes, he told me about that as well. So I'm sure you can understand why it is I arrived so late today. Yes, I understand. Don't worry. Normally, this is the easiest neighborhood to get to in the city, but the traffic was really bad today. I think there had been an accident on the road I needed to take or something. Ah, I see. Anyway, I think I've communicated pretty well exactly what I wanted to say to you over message already. I'm just here to hear your answer in person. I won't put on any pretenses and I won't beat around the bush. I don't like you and I'm not happy about you marrying my son. I really hope that we will be able to nip this whole thing in the bud and get everything solved without too much of a fuss. I'm sure you understand what I mean. Aiden and I have already decided that we are going to get married. We would really appreciate it if you would be able to give us your blessing. I'm not going to give in that easy, you know. After everything I've said to you already, do you really think I'm just going to change my mind and be happy to let you marry my son? Do you think I would be happy with the whole thing just because you love each other? Well, think again. Beatrice, I... Listen carefully, okay? I don't care how long you've been dating or how deeply you feel for each other. You said you run your own business, right? I can compensate you with enough money for you to live comfortably even without working for a few years. I really need you to break things off with my son. You will do that for me, won't you? No, I will not. What did you say? Then what were those messages you sent me this afternoon? I said I would think about it. I did not say that I was going to break things off with him. I will be honest with you. My mind was in a lot of turmoil coming over here. But I have made up my mind and I won't be changing it. I see. I'll have you know that crossing me is a choice you will most likely regret. But if your mind was in turmoil, then that may mean that you could still be swayed. 
Oh, no, I wasn't in turmoil because I thought about giving in to you and what you want, but because I have my business to think about, and I was worried that the stress from going through with this marriage might have a negative impact on that. I've just opened a new restaurant, you see. Oh, really? Were you not running a little Mexican hole-in-the-wall kind of place with ten or so tables? Yes, I was, but as I said, I just opened up a new place. What kind of place is it? It's an Italian place. Oh, wow. Well, that is certainly very different. You must have had to put a lot of thought into the interior as well. Yes, we had the whole thing redone. Oh, really? And how many tables do you have in this new place? Well, the restaurant has three floors. Th three floors? And how many tables, exactly? There are 80 tables in total. Did you really manage to make enough money running that tiny Mexican place to be able to afford somewhere this big? Well, I was running the old restaurant for five years, so yes, I was able to make enough. It seems like I'm not just dealing with any girl here. I'm going to have to tread carefully with this one. Anyway, you said that you would compensate me, didn't you? Hearing you say things like that just makes me all the more determined to marry your son, you know. Now you listen here, Francesca. This really is not the time to be stubborn. That would just be making things more difficult for the both of us. Maybe I need to be slightly more direct about how I'm not exactly excited at the prospect of having you as a daughter-in-law. And I cannot say that I can find it in me to wish you well. I do know why you hate me so much, you know, Beatrice. But I think you should reflect a little bit on your own past first before you start passing judgment on me. Excuse me? How dare you bring up my past? I'm not trying to make you upset, but you must understand that I've had to hold in a lot of my feelings today whilst listening to you talk to me like this. And you can't hold them in anymore, is that it? And just how exactly are you planning to compensate me, the woman your son loves, for hurting me like this? I'm going to give you money, of course. Money is nice and all. I don't know what things were like for you when you were my age, Beatrice, but these days, for a woman my age to earn as much as I do is no easy feat. If you're going to give me compensation, like you say, enough for me to not have to work for a few years would simply not cut it. If you were to give me enough money so that I wouldn't have to work for the next 40 years, I might consider it. I understand that emotions must be running high for you right now, but I would really appreciate it if you would take the chance to think about this when you have calmed down a little. You'll soon come to understand that the two of you ending things is in the best interests of both our families. I think it would be wise of you to listen to me, someone who has many more years of life experience than you on this matter. Beatrice, if I'm going to break up with your son, then I will just break up with him. I don't need any compensation or anything like that from you. Oh, really? It would be quite a lot of money, you know. I'm sure it would do you and your business some good. I don't know exactly how much you were planning on giving me, but I am confident that I have the ability to earn even more than that in no time. Well, I do admire your confidence, if nothing else. Did you really think that I would just willingly accept the money and agree to your request that I break things off with your son just because you came all the way here to see me in person? Anybody who would willingly do that really doesn't have a conscience. No matter what you say, I am not going to end things with your son. She certainly has spirit, I'll give her that. She really is exactly like me when I was young. I understand that you have strong feelings for each other. But your backgrounds are too different and I just don't think you will be well suited to each other in the long run. If you just acknowledge that things aren't going to work and bow out now, I'll be willing to give you even more than the amount I originally offered you. Well, I think you're the one who is going to have to concede, but I am going to marry your son. I am going to marry him no matter what. Honestly, this girl really could be my own daughter. I recognize her stubbornness in myself. She really must be quite the formidable businesswoman if she's been able to grow her business so much in such a short amount of time. So you really are going to go ahead and marry him? Yes. Yes, I am. Even after everything I said? Well, that's fine then. But I'm not giving you a single penny towards the wedding and helping you get started with your married life. That's absolutely fine with me. Are you being serious? 
I would have thought that would have been a more effective threat. What about a house? Do you even have somewhere to live together? Or are you just going to squeeze in a rented studio apartment somewhere? Why on earth would we live in a rented studio when we already have an apartment in the city center? You bought an apartment in the city center? Obviously, we had to take out a loan, and we're in a lot of debt right now. But we'll be more than capable of paying it back between us. With our salaries combined, it was quite easy to get it approved. Well, I suppose you really do deserve a round of applause, huh? Thank you very much. Well, if you've said everything you need to say, I will be going now. Sorry I can't stay longer, but you must understand that I'm very busy these days. I can't afford to spend too long just sitting around in some cafe. She really is way more formidable than I expected. I can't believe how well she's doing after only running her business for five years. She's ambitious and knows what she wants. I like her. Why would you take that money? Because you turned down the offer for us to move into the new house before selling the current one. That's just adding to the reasons why you shouldn't have accepted it. I'm sure my mom is just feeling sorry that I never got any money from her when we got married. As someone who has dealt with your mom, I can say that only someone with a very strong mentality can handle her. I felt that way from the first day I met her. And for the last two years, ever since my first interaction with her, it has become obvious that she views me as a subordinate and has no intention of being motherly towards me. From my position, it just seems like she doesn't think about you much at all. After all, the two of you have barely seen each other over the last three years. So how can you really say that? Just because I don't see her very often doesn't mean that I don't feel it. I can't forget what she tried to do to me three years ago, you know. And whenever you bring her up, I'm constantly reminded of that. And that's why I haven't tried to force you to see her at all during these last couple of years. My plan was to go on not seeing her for the rest of my life. Put yourself in my shoes. What if one of my parents had tried to do to you what your mom did to me? Do you think you would ever be able to go and visit them? You can't just try and turn the whole thing on its head like that. And why can't I? Think about it. It would make you feel really uncomfortable, wouldn't it? I'm saying that your mom used money to make me feel incredibly uncomfortable. And I don't understand how you could go and accept money from her when you knew full well that's how I felt. How could I refuse a gift from my mom like that? This is exactly what I don't understand. This is not a gift. Nothing is free in this world. Your parents didn't even come to our wedding, and we've basically had nothing to do with them for the last year. But when they called out of the blue last month saying that they wanted us to spend the holidays with them, I was very touched. Yes, yes, I know. I felt they were finally accepting me as part of their family. So I went to spend the holidays with them full of expectation that we would finally be able to have some kind of relationship. But no! What did I end up doing the whole time we were there? Sitting with your dad in the hospital. They didn't want me to spend the holiday with them. They wanted someone to watch your dad so they could go to your great uncle's house and have fun without having to worry. Do you realize how hard it was having to take care of someone I had never even met before then like that? I even have to help him go to the bathroom, for goodness sake. And that's exactly why I feel like your mom used me as a subordinate, even though I didn't see her for the last three years. Don't be such a martyr. If you hadn't wanted to do it, you could have just said no when my mom asked you to do it in the first place. Why are you making a fuss about this now when you seem pretty happy to do it at the time? If you'd felt intimidated into doing it, you should have said something. Why should I feel intimidated? I run my business honestly and live according to my principles, so I have nothing to be ashamed of. What makes you think I'd feel intimidated by your parents? Well, the reality of marriage is that people don't always get on with their in-laws. But now that they've at least extended an olive branch, it's time for us to make an effort to reconcile with them, don't you think? Well, I don't see it as your parents extending an olive branch. I see it as them wanting something from us. Interpersonal relationships are all business transactions at the end of the day. You need to be prepared to give as much as you receive. And if you're not, you shouldn't readily accept what you've been given before you fully understand the terms and conditions of the transaction. I've already paid my dues by looking after your dad over the holidays. 
I don't feel like I owe them anything else at all. Heaven only knows what your mom expects from us if we accept this money. So you'd better return it to her right this instant. Oh, it's an unknown number. I wonder who it is. It's probably a spam caller or something like that. But I better pick it up just in case there's a supplier calling me on a new number or something like that. Hello? Hi, Francesca. It's me. Me... Who? I'm sorry, I don't think I know who this is. My goodness. Do you not even know what your own mother-in-law's voice sounds like? Oh, I'm so sorry, Beatrice. How did you get my number when I never gave it to you? We only ever spoke on a messenger app before. I'm sorry about the whole voice thing. It's hard to tell who is speaking on the phone sometimes because the sound quality is so bad. There's no need to make excuses. It's fine. But are you really planning on being this insolent? Excuse me? I'm not quite sure about what you're talking about. Did you not get the money I sent you? Ah, so I guess he didn't send it back to her when he was meant to. You got it right! I sent you such a large amount of money and yet I didn't receive so much as a thank you! How incredibly rude! I suppose it's not the best time to tell her that I wanted to return the money. Honestly, I'm damned if I do and I'm damned if I don't. By the way, how much of your loan do you still have to pay back? Sorry? What did you just ask me? I'm asking you how much of your loan you have left to pay back. Why are you asking about that? However much it may be, I'll pay it back for you. So just tell me exactly how much it is over a message and I'll get it sorted. And why would you pay back our debt for us? You said you regretted taking out a loan, right? The interest rate should have gone up by quite a bit by now as well. I would just really like to know why it is that you suddenly want to pay our debts back for us. Please just tell me that first and then we can discuss other things. Is it strange that a parent would want to pay back her child's debt? Well, I'm not your child, and I have no intention of letting you pay it back for us. You really are a stubborn one, aren't you? Have you forgotten already, Beatrice? Have you forgotten what you tried to do to me before Aiden and I got married? I'll say to you now the same thing I said to you back then. I will pay the step back with my own money, and I do not need your help. I do not want to owe my husband's parents anything, and we've managed to last this long without any kind of relationship with each other, so maybe it's best we continue that way. I will pay back this debt. Well, I know that you earn lots of money. You made that abundantly clear the last time we spoke. But that doesn't mean that you should turn down my offer to help you out. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this so that I can make my son's life as easy as possible. It's not like he's suffering financially or anything. We're a double income household and we don't have any kids. I believe they're calling people like us dinks these days. Double income, no kids. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that we're not struggling to pay the step back by any means. Even though your restaurant is doing well, it must be quite hard to keep up with the interest payments. And then you have the worry of paying the rent for your restaurant on time as well as paying back the loan. Stop being stubborn and just let me help you. Beatrice, I am not stupid. Nothing is free in this world. There's always a catch. Excuse me. Humans naturally don't want to lose out on anything. So they would never give something without expecting something of similar value in return. So tell me, why is it that you want to help pay back my debt? I thought the two of you were paying it back together. No, Aiden pays for bills and groceries and I pay back the debt. That's our agreement. Stop acting like you're so smart. Just hurry up and tell me what it is you want us to do for you. What's the condition for you helping us with the loan? Because I am sure there is one. I want to know what you mean when you say you think I'm trying to avoid losing out. Have you been reading my mind or something? No, I'm just really good at making guesses. After all, I know what you're like from experience. Like when you said you wanted us to come and spend the holiday with you. When you really wanted someone to look after your husband whilst you went to celebrate at your brother's house. 
It's not like I asked you to look after him for a week or anything, was it? It was only for a few days. Well, anyway, Beatrice, the one thing I've learned from running a business is that you can't expect to gain something without giving something in return. Well, your father-in-law is laid up with a severe illness and his heart has become very weak. Ah, I see. You know I own a commercial building, right? Well, the steakhouse that used to be in one of the units has just closed down and it's a pretty decent-sized space. I was hoping you could move in there and start a new business. It's a great location. It's two minutes from the nearest subway station. You'll probably get lots of foot traffic and make a great profit. What did you just say? I'm confident that you could earn at least three times as much as you're earning right now. Especially because you wouldn't have to pay the extortionate rent that you need to pay for your current restaurant. And why on earth would you do this for me? I want you and Aiden to come down and live near us. After all, he's our firstborn son and it's his duty to look after us in our old age. Our youngest is getting married as well soon and we'll be moving away. So your father-in-law will be so very lonely. I found another apartment five floors above the one we live in, and I bought it already. It's much bigger than your current place, and I'll let you two move in there so that you have your own space. Beatrice, my business is here. My whole life is here. You can't expect me to just leave all of that behind at the drop of a hat. We have a happy life here. Well, I'm not happy with your current lifestyle. I won't have my child running to and fro worrying about all of this debt. Do I need to repeat myself? My life is here. My business is here. But is it really a business worth turning down this offer for? Is it really doing that well? Well, you may not think too highly of my business, but to me it's my everything. It's the fruit of my labor. But if you come down here, you won't need to pay rent for your restaurant and you won't need to pay off any more loans since the house is all paid off. You would be a fool to turn down this offer. If I told you how much profit that steakhouse was making in a month, you would be back in your bags and moving down here immediately. I am kind of curious as to how much profit they were making, especially if it's right in front of the subway station. It's probably in a prime location for people to just walk in off the street. As for Aiden, he's going to be getting the short end of the stick. He's going to have to be traveling back up there every day by train in order to get to work. You'll be able to work right on your own doorstep. You'll be getting both a house and a business for free. What's not to like? You'll be making a fortune. Giving you this opportunity is the least I can do for you as family. I can't help but see this as a regression away from our independence. Aiden has already been living apart from you two for many years, and I have also been living away from my parents for a while now too. I feel as if we moved into the same apartment building as you and everything we had was thanks to your money. I would feel a little stifled and even trapped by the situation. This is hardly any different from us directly moving into your house, is it? Well, even though we'll be living in the same apartment building, we'll still have our separate spaces. It will be nice for us to see each other's faces more often. We are family after all. We don't really know how much longer my husband has left so it would be nice for him to spend more time with his oldest son whilst he still can. So, let me get this straight. The reason you want us to come down there is because you want us to look after your husband and manage your household for you, isn't it? Well, that should be a given considering that we're family, shouldn't it? And anyway, it's not like I'm asking you to move in with us, so you'll still have lots of freedom. I may feel a little more inclined to grant your request if you had acted like we were a family over these past three years, but you haven't. You didn't even come to our wedding and we didn't receive any contact from you until you asked us to come for the holidays. Why are you suddenly acting like we're really close? I don't get why you're acting like this. I just told you that I'm giving you a house and an apartment for free. I'm not asking you to come and live with us. I'm just asking you to come and spend some time with us in the evenings every now and again when you finish work. I really don't understand what's so hard about that. When we came to see you over the holidays, I spent a total of an hour with you before you went to your brother's house. Do you know what I was thinking during that time? What? What were you thinking? I was thinking that I felt suffocated. You could have cut the atmosphere with a knife in that room. Well, I don't need you to give me an answer right away. 
Have a long think about my proposal and get back to me when you're ready, okay? Does the fact that your brother-in-law is getting married not spur you on a little? I don't really know why that has anything to do with me, to be honest. And anyway, I need to get ready for the lunchtime rush now, so I should hang up soon. Let's talk again in a few days' time, then. Why are you even entertaining her offer if you've already decided that you're not going to go? <sighs> I almost had a heart attack at the thought that you might be leaving us. Don't go having a heart attack at the wheel now, okay? I'm not going anywhere, so there's no need to worry. I was just so freaked out by the whole thing. I just wanted to keep you in the loop since we've been working together for so long. Please don't go, Francesca. Not because I want you to stay here and manage the restaurant, but because I think on a personal level, things will be bad for you if you go. Focus on switching lanes and then we'll talk. There's a girl I know who lives in my neighborhood whose husband was running a business, and her in-laws gave them lots of money to invest in their business, which they were really grateful for at first. But then, the in-laws started taking a chunk of their earnings from the business. And they started monitoring all of their car transactions as well. Oh my gosh. She said that the only reason they accepted the money from her in-laws was because they were in a really bad financial position. But you're not! You earn lots of money and you're very capable. So why would you need to accept your mother-in-law's money? Why would you go down there just because she told you to? But it would be a lot of money... Well, I suppose that in-laws with money are better than in-laws without money. The girl I just mentioned would spend every weekend doing housework for her in-laws on top of everything else. She did everything from the cleaning to the laundry to the cooking. There is a good chance that my in-laws would expect the same of me. I would really hate to see you stuck in a situation like that. I definitely think everything they're offering you is too good to be true. And their secret ulterior motive is to get you to become a full-time housewife and cater to their every need. If it came to that, you would obviously have no choice but to divorce your husband. It would be the best thing to do if things go to that point. Apparently, she couldn't even go to her parents' house without first getting permission from her husband and then confirming with her in-laws. Okay, you can stop with this story now. Ugh, it's giving me the shivers. It just gets worse from then on out. Shall I tell you what happened after she finally divorced him? She was only entitled to the alimony if it could be proved that she had contributed to building that family's wealth. And there was no proof that she had done that because she had been a full-time housewife. She ended up with a really small amount of money and the minimum amount of child support. Don't you worry. Nothing like that is going to happen to me because I am not going anywhere. You must promise that you really won't go. What are we all supposed to do without you? Thanks to you, we're finally turning a huge profit. Oh, there's no need to flatter me. Oh, this apartment block is really nice. The road is really quiet for this time of the afternoon. Yeah, this is a really nice area. Older people always live in nice places. Yeah, they really do. It's funny that Isabel never really seemed to want to work, but she wants us to come over for a housewarming party on our day off. Yeah, I was thinking that. <laughs> Hi there, Francesca. Come on in, come on in. It's nice to see you too, Zara. Hi, Isabel. Lovely place you have here. Please make yourselves at home. Thanks, Isabel. Come, come, take a seat over here. Wow, this house is so cozy. I love how you've arranged the furniture. I sent my housewarming gift ahead of time. Did you receive it already? Yes, I did. I received it this morning. Thank you so much. I put it on display just over here. Doesn't it look lovely? Yes, it does. Why, thank you. Did you say this place was about 90 square meters, Isabel? Yes, it's the perfect size for me to live by myself. It looks way bigger than that. Maybe it's because of the shape? I deliberately arranged all of the furniture to make the most of the space. Honestly, Isabel, when you left after your three-month contract was up, I thought things were going to be just fine. But boy, was I wrong. I'm so sorry. 
I had wanted to stay and help out for a little longer, but then my husband got sick. Of course, you had your priorities. It's nice to see you back in good spirits again after everything that happened. Thank you. That's so strange. I wonder what's made your in-laws suddenly want to make you go and live with them. I really don't know, but it doesn't sound like it's going to go well for me. They must be crazy if they think that you're going to give up your life here. Right? Honestly, the whole thing is driving me mad. I think my husband is secretly hoping that I'll agree to his parents' terms, you know. Well, I don't think it makes any sense for you to go and live with them like people did in the good old days. Times have changed. Just look at me. I have three kids. One son and two daughters who are both grown up. None of them are married, but I thought it would be best for them to go out in the world and gain their independence from me. I didn't want them to hold themselves back by clinging on to me. Living with them once they became adults was just uncomfortable anyway. You know, I never thought of mothers being uncomfortable with living with their children. I just kind of thought that mothers everywhere always wanted their children by their side. Are us mothers not humans too? Do we not have feelings just like anyone else? Anyone who thinks that mothers always unconditionally dote on their children is terribly mistaken, I'm afraid. <laughs> I suppose that would only be natural. But even though I encourage them, they still wouldn't shift themselves. I had to practically throw them out the door. And then one of my daughters only moved one block away from me. Honestly, I was so annoyed. I was tearing my hair out. Her idea was to be able to come over whenever she liked and get me to feed her. I wanted her to be really independent and actually try and do things for herself. But she clearly didn't want to do that. <laughs> yes, you're right. Her being nearby was annoying enough, but having someone I barely know moving into the apartment right above me and having her come and go from my house, that would be really annoying to me. I don't understand them at all. They've only ever met you once or twice and you don't even seem to have a good relationship. So why do they want you to be nearby? After all, you're going to be the one seeing more of them because your husband will have to have a long commute to work. If I had a daughter-in-law and she said she really didn't want to move near to me, then I wouldn't want to make her do it. That would just make both of us miserable in the long run. I would be worrying about her taking the food I slaved over making out of my fridge just like my daughter does. I would just find the whole situation very displeasing indeed. Wow, you're so cool, Isabel. I really wish that every mother-in-law was like you. So don't go, no matter how much your husband wants it, okay? I'm not going, don't worry. I really do think that is the best decision for everyone involved. You'll end up living day to day suppressing your anger to the point that you can't hold it in anymore. And if you're that stressed, you're likely to die even earlier than your in-laws. <laughs> that is an interesting thought. It's really no laughing matter. Shall I tell you a story about a family I knew who lived in the apartment block I just moved from? Go ahead. Well, the apartment I used to live in was a little bigger than this one, but still not huge. There was a woman who lived with her husband in an apartment around the same size as mine, and they seemed to be living a normal, happy, married life. But that was actually far from the truth. They would go to his parents' house around twice a week, which is a little excessive, in my opinion. How did you know that? Because the husband in question is actually my nephew. Oh my goodness, what a small world. So his parents are my brother and sister-in-law. The moment my nephew's wife quit her job and got pregnant, my brother and his wife started pressuring them to come and live with them. If you did decide to make this move, you need to take into account it might just be a stepping stone towards your in-laws getting you to come and move in with them officially. And my nephew felt that he was obligated to move in with them because they had given them so much financial support. Nothing in this world is ever free. And my nephew's wife found that out when her days became occupied with taking my sister-in-law to her hospital appointments and sitting by her bedside all day long in case she needed anything. There you go, Francesca. Another warning for you. I'm definitely not going, so I really don't need any more convincing, okay? Why can't you just tell them a straight no? But honey, would us going down there to live with my parents be such a bad thing after all? 
they would be helping us out so much financially. Without having to pay the rent for the restaurant and without having to pay back the debts anymore, we would have so much disposable income. We would be able to afford a fancy car in no time. And you can waltz off to the golf course with all the other fancy schmancy people. I'm a workaholic by nature, so if I started acting like that, I think I might just expire. Also, I couldn't care less about having a fancy car. And I hate walking, so naturally I also hate golf. I don't know why you thought any of those things would be enticing to me. Do you even know me at all? I'm going to stay here and live my life the way I like it. But my dad. What about my dad? Please spare a thought for him in all this. Why on earth would I bother to think about your dad? The first time I saw him is when I had to look after him over the holidays. And anyway, apparently he was even more against the idea of you marrying me than your mom was. But the thing is... He's very sick now. I need you to listen to me. I put my all into building this business from the ground up and now things are going really well. I built this business because I dreamed of its future. Do you really expect me to throw all of that away? I really didn't know you were the kind of guy who would force me into something like this, you know. It's making me start to resent you. Am I the one telling you to do this? It's my parents who want this. And how about you think about it like this? Yes, I know it will shake things up massively to leave our lives here behind. But you'll be able to do so much better with your business down there, don't you agree? The premises for your restaurant is right next to the subway station. And this is what both of my parents want. It really isn't that easy for me to refuse this, you know. Saying no to your parents really shouldn't be this hard, you know. Especially when it comes to something like this. Are you really going to uproot our entire lives here? You're ready to move in with your parents in all honesty, aren't you? Because you know that's what they really want out of all this. And did you think about my parents and all this? Should we just take them with us? Why should I go to the other side of the country and give up my livelihood for someone else's parents who I barely have any relationship with? My mom said she kept telling you the same things every time she spoke to you on the phone. She told you that she couldn't trust my younger brother to take over her property and that's why we needed to go down as soon as possible. So? So what that means is that she's probably going to give her property to us. Please don't shut it down so quickly and at least take another week to think about it. I won't talk to you about it anymore and I'll just let you figure out what you want by yourself. No, no, this can't be happening. I can't let myself be swayed. Hurry up and get things sorted up there and move down here already. I told you I need to have some time to think about it. What do you mean you need some time to think about it? I mean exactly what I said. I need some time to think about it. I was talking to my nieces about your situation, and none of them understand you at all. They said that they wouldn't have needed time to think about it at all and would have packed their bags as soon as they were offered all the things I offered you. Well, that's nice. You need to think a little faster. I told you, your brother-in-law is getting married soon. Well, congratulations to him. They're not going to be living too far away from us, you know. I could still decide to give him my property. I haven't made my final decision about that yet, you know. And I've told you that I will think about it. Anyway, if you will excuse me, I have a lot of customers to deal with. Okay, talk to you again soon. I figured that you were still ultimately going to refuse. If you were happy with the arrangements, you wouldn't have taken this long to think about it. Are you uncomfortable with the way we live right now, honey? No, I'm not. I will pay back the loan, and all you need to do is take care of the household expenses. Well, that's exactly what we're doing right now. Honey, you must understand that a little money isn't going to change my entire life. Even if your mom and I were close and did have a good relationship, this would still be really hard to do. I don't think I could live constantly being at loggerheads with your mom. Do you think you would be able to do this if the situations were reversed? I thought about it from your perspective for a while, and I agree that I wouldn't be able to do it. Then why did you try and force me into doing it before? Do you not like money, honey? 
Of course I like money. I love money, in fact. If I didn't like having money, I wouldn't wake up at 5 a.m. in the mornings to prepare the restaurant for opening. But I really don't like the way that your mom uses money to try and sway things in her favor. My brother's fiance seems to take better to that method of persuasion, so I suppose that's what she's used to. Well, I don't really blame her. Most people will be swayed when it comes to large sums of money. Maybe I am being too stubborn about it, but I really do have confidence that my business can do even better, which is why I'm so reluctant to give up on it. She's offering us a lot of money, and she's also offering us a lot of property, which leads me to say something else, and I'm sorry if this upsets you. Go ahead. How much longer do you think she's going to be around for? What do you mean by that? Well, these days, lots of people make it to 100 and beyond. So if she stays healthy, there's a possibility that she could be with us for much longer. I hope she enjoys all the pleasures her wealth can afford her many, many more years. And why are you talking about this? Well, there's a possibility that your mom could live another 30 to 40 years, right? After all, she's only in her 60s. That would mean that we wouldn't get her property until 30 or 40 years later. I didn't know you had been thinking that far ahead. I didn't think that hard about it. It was just an observation. And all of that time, she will keep me as her servant, just living a few floors away, always at her beck and call, expecting unconditional loyalty because she gave us a house and a business premises for free. Well, so many people have those kinds of relationships with their parents or in-laws. I feel like that would be the least we could do after she helped us out so much. I'm just talking in principle here. And not only that, the biggest problem will be that once her brother gets married, she'll start pitting me against his wife in some kind of twisted battle of filial piety. At least that's what I think. What on earth are you talking about? You're right. What's even the point of me saying all of these things if we're not even going to live with them anyway? Are you scared that your mom will actually give her property and wealth to your brother instead? She said that she would. So obviously that makes me a little uneasy. I'm only human after all. And I am the older brother after all, so I believe I'm more entitled to it than he is. I wouldn't be so sure about that. I know you don't know too many things about the world because you spent all of your youth studying, but I know how to read people. And I know that she's not going to give it to him because she doesn't trust him. She was only saying that to rush us into making a decision about going down there faster. She may end up giving him a little bit of something, but the main bulk will still go to you, I'm pretty sure. She just wanted to make us feel even more indebted to her by faking as if she were deigning to give us the rights to inherit her property over your brother. Do you think she really would just hand it over to him as soon as she hears that we're not coming? Maybe she would. Even if we don't do as she likes, I'm willing to bet she's still willing to dangle the inheritance in front of us as a way to pit us against your brother and his wife, even from afar. If one side is to give up, I don't think that means she'll immediately concede and declare she's going to give it to the winning side, though. Your mom wants both her sons and their wives to be loyal to her for the rest of her life, and she knows better than anyone that if she finally decides who to pass her wealth on to, she'll be discarded and lonely because fussing over her no longer has something in it for you. Instead, she'll add all sorts of conditions to the side that has given up the competition to somehow keep the rivalry going. This is how things work in this field. This is what I've learned in my eight years of running a business. So, honey, please don't accept anything from your mom and let's just stay here and carry on living as we were. It's best to live quietly without any drama, don't you think? For example, if one of us were to die tomorrow, what use would the money be then? It really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? To be fair, everything you've said to me just now has been a pretty good argument for us to stay here. And anyway, I've been doing some thinking. And it really would be in your best interest if we just stay here. You're perfectly happy here, and you look really happy with the life we have right now. Thank you for saying that, honey. It means a lot to me. To be honest, there are lots of daughters-in-law who work as servants for their in-laws without getting the money we would have received, as I've seen firsthand from my friends. Some may even say that it would seem much less unfair for your parents to treat me like that after we got so much financial aid from them. But I still think that the whole situation is not right, and I would rather avoid being treated like that entirely if I can. I understand. For you, it's okay. You can just say you don't want to do something. But it's not like that when it comes to the daughters-in-law. 
Anyway, there's still a possibility that your parents will split the inheritance between you and your brother. But in truth, I have no idea. I really don't want to badmouth your parents, but this whole game makes them look pretty bad. And even my family have said as much. I've let my parents down as the oldest son, I suppose. My dad collapsed and got really ill, but I didn't really do anything for him. They must think I'm useless. Honey, you can still be useful and show that you care for them by going down to see them at the weekends. There's no need to uproot your entire life here in order to prove yourself to them. I think that would make you the best husband and the best son anyone could ask for. It's called compromising. Who is it? It's your mom. Hi, Mom. So what have you decided to do then? I'll pass you over to Francesca, Mom. Why can't you answer me? What is it that's taken you so long? Why have you had to mull over things for so long? If you're going to come down, all you need to say is, yes, we're coming, and that's it. Is it really that complicated that you need your wife to speak on your behalf? Hi, Beatrice. If you two carry on like this, there may not be a single penny left for you, you know. I said nothing when you went ahead with this ridiculous marriage, even though I had let you know beforehand that I was very much against it. And now you're going to tell me that you're not going to come down here, even after everything I've offered you. I told you that you won't need to work for at least five years with the money I'm planning to give you. Why on earth would you not want to come down after hearing such an enticing offer? Beatrice, please... Do you have any idea how nice my younger son's fiancé is to me? Well, that's really nice to hear. I hope you have a very nice time with her. In all honesty, I could not care less how nice she is to you. She could be an angel incarnate for all I care. Well, like I said, I'm not going to be afraid to tell you that you aren't getting any of my money now. How dare you come in between a mother and her son like this, you meddling wench! Mom. What is it? Mom, I really don't appreciate you talking to my wife like that. I have always respected you no matter what, but I had no idea that you would use the precious money you accumulated over the years to threaten my wife like a coward. I'm really disappointed to see your true colors, Mom. Like I said, I always had the utmost respect for you as a parent, but now I am thoroughly ashamed of you for how you've acted towards the woman I promised I would spend the rest of my life with. You're ashamed of me?! What is there to be ashamed of? I'm just looking out for my children and I just want what's best for them. I never thought I'd hear my own son say these kinds of things to me. Mom, I am perfectly capable of looking after myself and I will live my life on my own terms. Thank you very much. I hope you can give my brother the best life possible with that money and that you're both happy with the arrangement. From now on, you can live as if you never have me for an eldest son. I will be hanging up now. Please don't contact me again. My friends always used to say that you should never marry or even deign to date somebody who obviously comes from a poor family. I married into a wealthy family, but because I was marrying their precious firstborn son, my in-laws seemed to think they had an excuse to treat me poorly because they believed that I wasn't good enough for him. I know that many people get treated poorly by their in-laws, particularly women, but I really didn't think that things would be this bad for me. One of my college friends used to say that if you're going to be mistreated by your in-laws anyway, it's better to have some money coming your way for yourself or your child, so you should always marry into a rich family just in case things go south for you. She laughed about it, but I don't know where she is or how she's doing now. As for me, my life has taken a different path. Instead of trying to marry into a wealthy family and being subjected to their whims, I decided to work hard and become wealthy myself. I always knew that I would be under scrutiny as a daughter-in-law who isn't always willing to do as her in-laws say. However, if I'm capable and confident, why should I feel self-conscious about what they think of me? I decided that the best policy going forward was not to pay any heed to my in-laws. I do the bare minimum that's required of me, and that's it. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe.